This lens was sent to me a few months ago, and shortly after it was sent to me, Seven Artisans released the version 2 of the lens, and it looks like the version 2 fixes one of the issues I have with this lens. Before I talk about the lens, I want to quickly mention this zine that I purchased from a British photographer based in Japan. Now the photographer's name is Johnny Dub, which does sound like a DJ from the late 80s, early 90s, but anyway, I will talk more about the zine and show you some images from the zine at the end of the video. It's a very compact lens for a 35mm f2. The aperture ring is at the front of the lens, it goes from f2 all the way up to f22. Now from f2 to f8 you have half stops and then from f8 to f22 is full stops and there's a nice positive click to the aperture ring. The focus on this lens is very smooth. Now its closest focusing is 0.7 meters or 70 centimeters and it goes all the way to infinity. Now sadly infinity is not infinity on this lens, you do have to pull it back a little bit because if you do put it all the way around to infinity at the hard stop your image is going to be slightly out of focus so you do need to be aware of that that infinity is not infinity on this lens. The lens has a focus tab which is one of my issues with this lens. It becomes really uncomfortable using this focus tab even after a short period of time because it's too small and the edges are too sharp. As you can see the focus tab is much smaller than the focus tab on my 28mm Summicron. Now I can use my 28mm Summicron all day long and it doesn't bother me, it doesn't become uncomfortable. But after a short period of time of using this focus tab on this lens from Seven Artisan it becomes really uncomfortable and actually digs into your fingers. So now you're going to see a slideshow of some photos taken with the M10P and this 35mm f2 from Seven Artisans. Then after the slideshow, I'll talk a little bit more about the lens and one of the issues which should have been fixed hopefully with the version 2. the photos you've just seen are direct out of the M10P and as you can see this lens paired with a digital rangefinder can produce some really nice images. Now I didn't shoot any film with my M6 and this lens because this lens has an issue. This is the Mark 1 version. I think they fixed it in the Mark 2. It's that red orb or light leak at the bottom but it's not a light leak because some of the photos that I got that red orb at the bottom the lens wasn't pointing anywhere near the direct light. So I don't know what happens. And because you're using a rangefinder, you're looking for the rangefinder patch, you don't see that. For some reason, it just appeared every now and then. So we really didn't want to waste a roll of film. Now the version two has a hood. And I think it ruins the look of the lens because obviously as you can see, there's this really small lip that's not really a hood. So you've got a screw on hood now, but it makes the lens look really ugly and it would block quite a bit of the rangefinder patch. I prefer the look of this, but if you do go down this route and take the lens off and keep it like the version one, which is what this is, you are gonna get that red orb every now and then. I really like this lens. It's a nice compact design and it looks great on a Leica camera. Now I tested this lens on a Canon R5 with an adapter because I wanted to see how this lens held up with a 45 megapixel full frame sensor. My M10P is only 24 megapixels. And I was pleasantly surprised. This can handle 45 megapixels, no problem. Now some of the photos from the Canon R5 and some of the photos that you saw in the slideshow earlier will be in a Dropbox folder. And a link to that Dropbox folder will be down below in the description. So you can head over there for yourself and download some of the photos. Now I'm going to put the camera and the lens to one side. And we're going to talk about this zine I purchased. It wasn't sent to me, I actually purchased this from Johnny. I just want to share other people's work on this channel. 
If you like the idea of this, let me know down in the comment section and I will try to include more zines and more books in upcoming videos. The zine is called Kaiko, which is a Japanese word for retrospective. The zine covers four years of Johnny's work in Japan and it is clear he's put a lot of work into this zine. This zine is designed for both Western and Japanese readers. This is the Western side, so you'll open up and there'll be the intro at the front. And if you turn it around, which is how Japanese read, which is backwards to some people, but I guess to Japanese people, the way we read is backwards. You'll open the zine up and it's in Japanese, which is a really nice touch. There's a lot of thought gone into this zine. Now I'm gonna jump over to an overhead camera and show you some of my favorite photos. Now, like I said earlier, I purchased this zine and it cost me 55 British pounds, which included international shipping, which I thought at the time was quite expensive. But after spending a little time looking through the zine, I think it was money very well spent. I like to buy other photographers work. I have quite a few books and zines because it's nice to support other photographers. And it's also nice to see how they see the world as well. And I have to admit, I'm looking forward to going back to Japan after spending a bit of time going through Johnny's zine. Don't forget, there will be a link to Johnny's work and his website down below in the description. If you want me to include more people's work in my videos, like zines or books, let me know down in the comment section. So that's it for this quick review on this lens from Seven Artisans. I didn't want to spend too much time on it because basically a couple of weeks after they sent it to me, they brought out a version two. It's basically the same lens, but the version two comes with a big ugly hood on it. It's a really nice lens. I'll put a few links down below to where you can purchase this lens. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you so much for watching.